Welcome to the Power User Guide for InCell Westerns. Following is an introduction to the InCell Western, or ICW. We will cover the InCell Western assay, a typical workflow, basic considerations for success, and reference a sample protocol. The InCell Western is an immunocytochemical assay. It uses target-specific primary antibodies and infrared-labeled secondary antibodies to detect proteins, just as a standard Western blot does. But in the case of the InCell Western, proteins are detected in their cellular context. Working with the cellular environment allows researchers to fully evaluate conditions, such as the functional effects of drug compounds, and address other cellular issues, such as cell permeability and toxicity in their experiments. In situ detection also simplifies sample handling and eliminates variability in artifacts caused by cell lysis. Because there is no lysate preparation, electrophoresis, or transfer, the assay is fast, increasing throughput. A typical in-cell Western workflow looks like this. First, grow a monolayer of your cells in a microplate. Second, treat your cells with the inhibitor or stimulant. Fix and permeabilize the cells, then block. Third, incubate the primary antibody. Fourth, incubate the secondary antibody or use a cell stain. And finally, image and quantify. We will go through each of these steps, pointing out the most important considerations and helpful tips and tools for success. Let's start with some basic considerations for experimental success. First, imaging in the near-infrared provides unique advantages. Here, in a comparison provided by Dr. Mark Winey of the University of Colorado Boulder, the autofluorescence of glutaraldehyde fixed cells is compared at several different wavelengths. The cells are not stained with any fluorophores and are viewed using standard blue, green, and red filters or a custom near-infrared filter. When compared to standard methods, detection of near-infrared probes with excitation and emission at 700 nanometers or 800 nanometers in the near-infrared minimizes interference caused by autofluorescence of cells. It also minimizes the autofluorescence of other factors, such as microplates and chemical compounds, particularly potential drug candidates involved in the assay. All signal seen within the blue, green, and red filters is caused by autofluorescence. For more information on the advantages of near-infrared imaging, please read a paper from the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry called Fluorescence Spectroscopic Profiling of Compound Libraries. The paper is available through ACS Publications at this link. InCell Westerns assayed with the infrared fluorophores on the Odyssey Infrared Imager or the ARIUS Automated Infrared Imaging System are capable of simultaneously detecting two targets using two spectrally distinct dyes. Separate lasers and fluorescence detectors are used for each dye. IR dye 680 emits at approximately 700 nanometers and IR dye 800 CW at approximately 800 nanometers. The images can be viewed separately or overlaid Signal appears yellow where both infrared probes are being excited. Two-color analysis using infrared fluorophores makes normalization easy. In-cell Western assays can be normalized in one of two ways. The first method uses primary and secondary antibodies for normalization against a total protein antibody or a housekeeping protein in a single channel. For example, if phosphorylated ERK is a target of interest, an antibody against total ERK or against a housekeeping protein can be used in the opposite channel to normalize for well-to-well -well variations in cell number. The alternative, more cost-effective approach involves the use of two fluorescent cell stains in the 700 nanometer channel. Sapphire 700 and DRAC5 are cell staining agents that can be used in combination for accurate normalization of well-to-well -well variation in cell number over a broad range of cell densities. More information on normalizing with these cell stains can be found in the document Using Sapphire 700 and DRAC5 for Cell Number Normalization. 
at www.lycord.com slash cell stain dot normalization. When choosing your reagents for your experiment, it is important to select a primary antibody that is rated by the manufacturer as validated for immunofluorescence. The antibody you choose must also be able to recognize fixed epitopes. Note that an antibody that works great on Westerns may not be the appropriate choice for an in-cell Western. Antigens in ICWs have been fixed and will form crosslinks that look different than the same denatured antigen in a Western. Choosing an antibody that recognizes your antigen of interest is important because in ICWs there is no way to determine the molecular weight of the detected antigens. Verifying the specificity of your chosen antibody is critical to success. It is equally important to run several controls during the assay. When planning your ICW, select appropriate wells for a background control. These wells will receive only secondary antibody. Also plan for several wells that have either upregulated or downregulated expression of the target protein. These will function as basal controls, either positive or negative. The remaining wells will receive a serial dilution of your chosen treatment. During this demonstration, we will be using the protocol Assessing Response of A431 Cells to Stimulation with Epidermal Growth Factor as an example experiment. A complete and current version can be found at www.lycor.com icw.egf. This experiment addresses the effects of treating cells with epidermal growth factor. It looks at four different scenarios. 1. Phosphorylated Epidermal Growth Factor Receptors, EGFR, versus Total EGFR. 2. Phosphorylated EGFR versus Total Extracellular Signal Regulated Kinase, or ERK. 3. Phosphorylated ERK versus Total ERK. And 4. Phosphorylated EGFR versus Phosphorylated ERK. We will refer to this experiment several times throughout this demonstration.